please visit mentallyhealthynation.org to learn more. 91.3 FM WBNY is proud to present Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Award-winning investigative journalism. Is the NRA imploding? Providing relevant analysis that makes you think. Secret State Department documents, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. Fact-finding reports you will not hear elsewhere. Democracy Now! airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. on 91.3 FM, WBNY, Buffalo. Ready for radio that's challenging, innovative, and encouraging? Tune in. Living for the people. This is L. Nathan Hare. Join me right here, 91.3 FM WBNY, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. after Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! We'll provide objective analysis regarding current issues. Call 878-5104. It's Living for the People on 91.3 FM WBNY. WBNY Buffalo. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of 91.3 FM WBNY, the United Students Government at Buffalo State, or Buffalo State itself. Due to the opinionated nature of these programs, listener discretion is highly advised. If you have any questions or comments about today's program, you can give us a call at 716-878-5104. To join Mr. Hare on today's Living for the People, dial 878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. Or go to Facebook.com slash 91.3 WBNY and comment there. That's Facebook.com slash 91.3 WBNY. Courtesy Bright. All right, welcome to Living for the People. This is L. Nathan Hare. Welcome you to our broadcast, focused on providing you insight into events of facts shaping our, excuse me, into those uh, facts behind those policies and, and events that are shaping our world for today and for tomorrow. Join us weekly on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. following Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! program. And, of course, you know our program is live, so you can call and you can join our discussion. We really hope that you will. Our number here, again, is 716-878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. We're here with Norm McCarter, who's in our in-studio audience at one. Welcome, Norm. Thank you, Mr. Hare. Good morning, sir. All right. And we're here with Willie H., who's our first citizen of the 21st century, our engineer, who helps us to be able to get this program uh, uh, live stream uh, around the world. Welcome, Willie. Well, welcome, everybody, to Living for the People with L. Nathan Hare. I want to kind of maybe dedicate this show to my man, James Braun, a good friend of mine. He's um, known him for over 20 years. He made the difference when I started... Um, Time Warner Cable back in 98 uh, was a friend, taught me a lot of things. So this show show is dedicated to my man, James. Absolutely. He just passed away yesterday morning. Yeah. Uh, You know, we've we've done a shout out, you know, to James Brown on most of our broadcasts over the past uh, three or four months. And uh, we didn't want to talk about this during the course of his illness. Because you just want to keep those things private. Right, but right. Uh, now that that his passing has occurred, uh, we're uh, also sharing our condolences with Kaki, his sister, who's been uh, standing with him for the past several months. Mm-hmm. Uh, she actually literally relocated, you know, from from yeah. Philadelphia yeah. to uh, to Buffalo yeah. to uh, to take care of him. And uh, whatever we can do to help out, we will do. Uh, if you all want to just send in your thoughts, uh, you can call in uh, yeah, call to the in. program. Call in on the number at 716-878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. And just give your condolences. It, it, it really helps the family mm-hmm. to know that there are people out here who appreciate the work that our producer has done over the course of the man, the past few decades that yeah. he has been involved uh, in presenting this work to our public. Uh, this, this is go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hare. I just like to leave mine also. Um, like to leave my condolences, uh, Khaki, to you and your son. Uh, you know, you guys uh, allowed me to come on the show and kind of sit here, uh, just uh, sitting here for James while he was, you know, going through his illness. And I just want to just say, um, you know, you, you got my utmost respect and you got my condolences. Anything we can do here at the show, 
uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, this is, a, we've got to remember, this is the house that James Braun built. built. That's Matter right. of fact, I just found out that James well, started with Mr. Here. I thought this was Mr. Here, then James, but James started this, and then James brought me on. So what right. you see now is the house that James Braun right. built. See, I, I, I named the program, but James was the one that asked me to come and join you know, the program here mm -hmm. at Buff State. And so we de designed the program together. And um, it's really been a joy working with James all these years. Yeah, James, all, always fun. All, James, James brought a certain, James was a different type of guy, but he brought, he added a, like flavor. You know how in your life, he, or, he, the you, flowers you, you and know, all the other he, stuff. You know, he was also a contrarian. So yeah. when, when, you, when you started talking <laughs> about something, he'd say, well, what about this? Yeah, <laughs> what yeah, about that, yeah. right? So he, you know, He added a lot to my show. Like I said, <laughs> for the over 20 years that I've known him, he added a lot. He may help, help me to make it through a lot of days, actually. So yeah. thank you, James. So, you know, with a heavy heart, I want to, uh, just kind of get into the issue of the day. Um, I didn't get a chance to ask Norm if he was involved in this. Uh oh. Uh, but the president, the former president, mm -hmm. the twice indicted president, the thirty at the time seventy four charges president, has been indicted again for the third time. Mm. <laughs> this is not funny. Mm. <laughs> Indicted again for the third time for additional charges. Mm. Can, can I just read to you? Then I want to talk to you about a concept. Yeah. I, I just want to read to you what this indictment actually says. It says that he was indicted, is criminally charged with illegally conspiring to overturn his election loss to President Joe Biden in 2020. He was indicted on four federal felony charges that centered on his alleged efforts to discount legitimate votes in the 2020 presidential race and subvert the election itself. I, I, I want you to understand what that part means. Now go through the rest of this. When they say that he he acted to discount the votes of the uh, electorate, what he means is you all heard the tape where he says to uh, Raffensperger, the secretary of state in Georgia, I just need a 11,780 votes. That, that, that's all I need. <clears throat> you tell me you can't find 11,781 votes? It's almost like he's saying out of 5 million votes that were cast, you couldn't cheat on 11,800. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't just say this. He repeated it over and over and over again in a one-hour phone call that had witnesses. There were witnesses on the Georgia side of the call, and there were witnesses on the Trump side of the call that were a part of the call. I, why would you say stuff like this on the air? What would make you think that nobody's ever going to repeat what you just said? But he did that, right? When, it's, when it talks about discounting the vote, that essentially is saying, I want you to take away the votes of 12,000 people who voted throw their votes out, and replace their votes with my vote. I'll vote 12,000 times for, for me. That's basically what he was saying. How can that not be sedition in the United States? How can that not be something that everybody in the United States would object to? Why would even the most ardent Trump fans not object to him basically throwing out, trying to throw out, almost 12,000 votes in, in Georgia well, and replacing them with his own vote. Well, Mr. Here, my thought is, what's his name? Trump. <laughs> I believe he grew up believing Trump is over everything. Yep. He was like that snake on the tree in the garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> did he really, did God really say that? Th that's what he said, right? <laughs> did God really say that? <laughs> <laughs> now, now you checking God's words at the door. Right. So of course you can check people's votes at the door. If you right. could, you could check God's word, word at the door. Yeah. Right. So that was the first thing. The the uh, second charge is a conspiracy to impede uh, the congressional proceeding where the election results were certified. Now you all saw that. I mean, I don't understand how you cannot understand this when they went into the Capitol building you know, some 6,000 strong, their goal was to stop the proceeding 
where the Electoral College votes were actually certified by the joint session of Congress. That is a necessary step in order for you to uh, uh, effect the transfer of power from one presidential administration to the next to certify the election. That's a absolutely necessary step. That's not a, 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 a pro forma kind of a thing. That's something that has to be done. They did this for the purpose of pre preventing that certification from taking place at that time with the goal that when uh, time goes by, you know, instead of this being done at one o'clock, you know, on that day, you wind up it not being done on that day on January 6th at all. If it didn't get done during that time period, Trump has time to start organizing. Well, I need for you to call, you know, the secretary of state, you know, in, in Arizona and the secretary of state in, in uh, Michigan and in Pennsylvania and Arizona and New Mexico and Georgia and uh, tell them that we just need for them to say that there's confusion. You know, we have two different slates of, of uh, 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 delegates, you know, from the Electoral College for the same election. You know, it's confusing. So let's just suspend the vote of the public and send the vote to the state uh, uh, legislature in all of these states and let the state legislature vote for who got the Electoral College votes for that for that state, because the majority of those states had Republican uh, administrators or, or governors. And so he felt that that would be a way for him to be able to manipulate the, the process, m manipulate the procedures and get Trump reelected again. Right. So that was what that charge was about. The uh, third charge is a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have that vote counted. Of all of the things that exist in the United States that makes the United States what it claims it is, as opposed to being what we claim other nations are, is our democracy. The fact that the majority rules, not only does majority rule, the majority rules in the context of rights that are established in the Constitution and in the amendments to the Constitution that are your rights. Your right not to have your home invaded, your right to your vote. Your vote is your constitutional core right. It's the one thing that gives you, gives every single person in the United States power. Everybody has the shared power of being able to vote. So to attack the vote itself is something that is anathema to the existence of the United States. It's not just a, a crime. It's anathema to the existence of the United States. That's what Donald Trump is being charged with. So the uh, uh, charges mark an unprecedented uh, uh, indictment of this president. The election probe was led by uh, Jack Smith, who oversaw a separate investigation into Trump's retention of classified documents. That's the other thing was already done last week, Thursday. So we're talking about last week, Thursday, uh, whatever date that was, uh, July 29th, we're talking about from then to yesterday, this man got indicted twice <laughs> over the course of basically a four-day period for the most heinous kind of things you can, get, you can get indicted for in the United States to prevent the United States from doing what the United States does, which is to use democracy to elect its administrators. That's what he was preventing from occurring. Why would anybody in this country not object to what Donald Trump did? I listened to these people on the, on the radio on the way down and, oh, no, I think that this was, you know, a false flag operation. It wasn't Donald Trump. They, they hired people from the FBI and the, uh, the, the Justice Department and they dressed up looking like citizens mm. <laughs> and, and went to— uh, uh, to attack the Capitol building and beat up, you know, the, uh, mm. uh, uh, what's his name, Fanon, the, 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 the officer that was uh, so much talked about beating on, on TV. Yeah, they took an a, a actual shield, a body shield, and they were bashing this man in his head and his face with a body shield. These are the people that were the law and order people that, that stand behind the police department. So I want to take this discussion into a context. Mm-hmm. And the context is the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act. You all know this as RICO. RICO Act. And I want to apply this 
to our uh, our cousin. We, we got to own him because he's he was born in America, so we we have to own him, Donald Trump. I, I want to apply this. Part of the Organized Crime Act of 1970 is called the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. It makes it unlawful to acquire, to operate, or receive income from an enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. Now, this law was created because in response uh, uh, to the, uh, the North winning the Civil War and then the Reconstruction era, uh, supposedly, I, I don't think it was Reconstruction at all, I think it was Deconstruction, but that's another issue altogether. But in that 10-year period after the end of the Civil War, all these uh, uh, practices were legitimized for African people. They were able to vote for to become governor, to run for governor, to run for uh, county executive, to run for common council offices, uh, to be senators, to be Congress people, and so on, which had never occurred, you know, before. They were able to uh, testify in in uh, 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 cr criminal uh, 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 criminal trials. Uh, they were able to sign contracts. They were able to apply for loans. They were able to buy land and have their land defended by the uh, the police, you know, in, in in the state troopers in their areas. All these things were, you know, citizenship yeah. was made possible, you know, for these African people. Well, what happened was you had the body of people who are the ancestors of the Tea Party people and the uh, MAGA Republicans right now. You have their ancestors. And that that's I'm not factually. I'm just my, my feeling is that that's who these people are. Right. That that that, that their ancestors organized uh, uh, ways to be able to prevent African people from being able to operate their citizenship. So they develop citizen councils and they develop conspiracies, organizations, enterprises that would uh, uh, deny people the ability to get licenses to operate their businesses, that would deny people the ability to get uh, water lines, you know, to connect their uh, uh, the, the, the access of water, you know, to their properties, you know, and that sort of stuff. Anything they could do to make it as impossible as as possible for you to be able to operate in your citizenship, they use these organizations to get these things done. The RICO, organ, the RICO Act was created to prevent not just individual people from committing acts of racism uh, and, and violence against people of color, but it was also to prevent these kinds of people from organizing into enterprises and using legal business structures to do illegal things. That's what the RICO Act was created for. So you couldn't hide behind, well, it wasn't me, it was the organization. Well, that was before uh, John Roberts said that uh, uh, or <laughs> corporations are people too. So I, I guess corporations are so 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 empowered with rights that you know we, we can't we can't attack uh, or, or or judge corporations anymore. But that's not true. The RICO Act was designed to prevent enterprises from uh, becoming created and used to be able to engage in uh, malicious conduct uh, in in this country. It was geared towards organized criminal activities underlying the underlying tenet of RICO is to pr to prove and prohibit a pattern of crimes conducted through an enterprise which the statute defines as any individual any partnership any corporation any association or any other legal activity or entity and any union or group of individuals associated in fact although not a legal entity any of those things are enterprises under the RICO Act. And that's what seems to me to apply to what has gone on with Donald Trump, that we keep focusing on Donald Trump. But I think that we need to broaden this conversation, that we should be focusing on the organizations that Donald Trump either created or Donald Trump influenced or Donald Trump worked through to engage in depriving American people of their right to vote, of their actual vote, of their right uh, to be uh, free 
of theft, their right not to be defrauded. Uh, to defraud is, I tell Norm, Norm, you know, you roll with me. Give me just a thousand of your dollars. Give me a thousand dollars, man. And and we're going to build, you know, a new Tower of Babel, you know, over on the east side of Buffalo. And then you come back, you know, a year later and you find like a little, you know, anthill, you know, with some some crayons and, and some little dolls on top of it and say, well, well, that's all we got right now. But we're still working on it. Give me a thousand more of your dollars. Right. That That's defrauding you. That's that. Right. That's that's illegal. You can't do that. Well, that's what Donald Trump was doing. He's telling these people that I need your money to help me run for president. But he's taking the money and using the money to pay his legal expenses. Now, I don't know whether it was 40 million or 20 million. There seems to be some dispute, you know, about how much his legal legal expenses were over the course of the past year or so. Whatever it was, he was taking money from people saying that he was going to use that money to run for office. Then he used the money to actually pay his legal expenses and the legal expenses of his co-conspirators. Donald Trump and his co-conspirators, uh, Walt N- uh, uh, Nota, uh, N- N- Nata, uh, Carlos De, uh, uh, Lever- De, De Oliveria, uh, all those people, uh, um, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Rudy Giuliani, you know, all, all these people are a part of a coherent conspiracy to uh, uh, defraud the uh, uh, people of the United States of, of their choices in their electoral, in, in, in a legitimate election. That's what Donald Trump, you know, has been involved in. But it wasn't just Donald Trump. It's all these other people. Sidney Powell, you know, the uh, 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 Lieutenant General Michael Flynn uh, and so on. All these people were a part of this conspiracy. And it seems to me that they should all be charged under the RICO Act. Make them defend that uh, they were not engaged in racketeering, because it seems to me obvious that racketeering is the underlying, I mean, uh, other than treason itself, the underlying crime engaged in by these people was racketeering. Yeah. If you were doing this and you were selling policy slips, you know, for, you know, a numbers racket and whatnot, they put you in jail for being a part of the organization, even if you were just a secretary, <clears throat> even if you were just a delivery boy, you know, you know, just picking up policy slips from one place and taking them to another place. You didn't commit a crime yourself. Well, under the racketeering law, you are you are guilty of the crime because the organization was guilty of the crime and you knew the organization was a part of this guilty activity. And you did this, these actions working for that organization anyway. It's actually a crime for you to work for an organization that is engaged in conscious illegal activity that you knew the organization was engaged in. That's a crime in and of itself, even if you didn't commit the crime. Yeah, yeah. It's important for us to understand that. You, you know, Mr. Hare, sometimes it, it seems to me that it's it's um, so much harder when you go for the head of the snake. Yep. You, you, you know, it seems like you want to, just like what you just said, uh, go for this situation and attack from within. And if, and if you, if you do that and you start bringing down the, people that on the inside that are helping uh, Trump do the things that he's doing. I think that I think he can be brought down, but going for him the way that they're going for him. I think we need to just change the manner of, of the way that we're going after him. Is, is yeah. I, I really just think that we have to do more than just focus on the crimes that have been committed by Donald Trump. Right. There's a whole body of people that helped Donald Trump mm-hmm. or that he worked through who consciously were engaged in the activity of defrauding the American public. Uh, you, Go ahead. I, I'm just saying, uh, it's it's just like the mob, <laughs> you know. Right. You can call him the Teflon Don because mm-hmm. everything is kind of sliding off of him. Yep. He's it, it's not hitting him directly. I think we need to, you know, go from within, get some of these some of these uh, people that are involved in helping him. Some of these people, um, you know, up from the January six. Uh, Insurrection, right? And 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 I mean, start there and 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 just go forth from there. I went to an article written by Catherine Fung, and she had interviewed U.S. Attorney, former U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid, and it, I took her lead in my thought process in developing my ideas around this racketeering uh, 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 framework 
for how to understand what Donald Trump has been about and how uh, uh, we should be responding to Donald Trump. And I'm saying this because if we just focus on one man and we don't focus on this entire enterprise of people, we miss our opportunity to be able to stop something that is underway that really is insidious and has the uh, potential to undermine and and actually completely change the character of the uh, system of government of the United States of America. You got 74 million people who thought that Donald Trump was a legitimate person to be the president of the United States who voted in the 2020 presidential election. Those people are still out here whining, oh no, the election was stolen. Oh no, Donnie's our guy. Oh no, Donnie did a great job for us when he was president of the United States. He did a great job of withdrawing from from NATO. He did a great job of withdrawing from the uh, 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 Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement with the Pacific Rim uh, countries that now China is, you know, (laughs) they're the bosses now rather than the United States because of Donald Trump. It's Donald Trump who erected all of these tariff barriers and whatnot uh, to prevent products from coming into the United States at, at a higher expense. But what happens is American people still bought those products. They just paid more for it. And so you weren't taxing. Uh, Germany or uh, uh, Russia or or China or Japan, you're taxing the United States, the citizens of the United States. These are the things that these people that support Donald Trump say were good things. <laughs> what does this say for the character of of these people that are, that are rolling with Trump? Now, I mean, we see the the backstabbing. We see. The, you know the theft and 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 then the, just the, the dishonesty um, and these character traits are you know are things that you know. Trump- so, so the excuse that they give Norm is well you know they get their news from Fox News they get their news from social media, but even dumb people, I mean extremely dumb people, can figure out that when you call the Secretary of State of a of a a, a, a state in the United States, and you ask that Secretary of State to wipe out almost 12,000 of the votes of citizens in that country and replace them with 12,000 votes that are just written up by Donald Trump, that that's fundamentally treason. Yeah. That's fundamentally sedition. That is fundamentally illegal. That is fundamentally an, an anathema to the existence of the United States if you allow that to occur. Even the dumbest person in the, in the country could figure that out with no more evidence. You, you, you already nailed it down. Yet we have tens of millions of Americans who think that what Donald Trump was about was great, you know, for this country. Yeah. Like, like minded, uh, it, you know, it, and that is what the problem is. Yep. Mr. Here. Yeah. See, so, so you're, you're not going to get any success in terms of, of improving the governance of the United States unless you do something about those people that make up these tens of millions of voters who think that Donald Trump is a wonderful person, that what he did was wonderful stuff. We have to find a way to get those people in front of the truth and get them to either say, I was wrong, what this man was about was anathema to the country, or let us know for certain that you just don't like the United States as it is. You want the United States to be something else. You want the United States to go back to being what it was in 1800 when you had, you know, mammies and you had, you know, African people running around here as, as, as talking uh, 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 horses and and talk, talking oxen and whatnot. That's the, that's the country that you think you, you want to be. And we have to fight that country. Now I'm saying that they don't have to fight that country. We have to fight that country. Because we're the ones who are going to lose if we don't stop this right now, right? So it's important for us to see this in context. Uh, In the article that uh, Catherine, uh, uh, she's usually called Katie, uh, Katie Fung uh, wrote, she says that Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis, uh, in her sweeping uh, investigation into Donald Trump, which began two years ago, after it was discovered that the former president had called Georgia Secretary Brad Raffensperger and implored him to find more than 11,000 votes needed to win uh, in Georgia. Since then, 
The probe has expanded to include Trump's associates, the fake elector scheme, threats and harassments against election workers. Two election workers lost their jobs because he lied about these people. Uh, 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 Rudy Giuliani claimed that these people were, were actually stuffing uh, 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 ballots and so on when they weren't doing anything of the kind. But he was able to do this, and then you've got all of these Republican signifiers that start attacking, you know, these two women. They couldn't go home because people were were uh, 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 posting up outside of their home, acting like they were going to shoot them, you know, and so on. These were the kinds of things that were done under uh, uh, Donald Trump and his people that he was involved in this scheme with. She goes on to talk about the fake elector scheme, threats and harassments about election uh, against election workers and efforts by unauthorized individuals to access voting machines in an organized criminal enterprise, i.e. a racket. What Donald Trump was orchestrating was a racket, a crime. It was mafioso. That's what was being done yeah. in the name of of the citizens of the United States of America. One of the charges that McQuaid thinks would likely be an outcome in Georgia is a RICO charge, which is used to target organized crime. The RICO Act follows prosecutors to take down a whole organization rather than just individual members of a particular organization for particular crimes. It has been expanded to be used for gangs, for a political, this, this is all that gets covered under RICO. Gangs, political campaigns, insider trading schemes, police departments, and so on. So what Donald Trump was a part of was a racket. And it needs to be looked at from that perspective. Yes, sir. She, so she goes on and says the idea the, the, and why it is so useful is to allow you to go after the, so, the, the actual boss of a uh, enterprise. She told MSNBC, the person who doesn't get his hands dirty and allows his underlings to do all the dirty work, that's the person that you have to get. She explained that it allows prosecutors to bring together various schemes under one umbrella, uh, a RICO charge, to prosecute the whole group, otherwise known as the enterprise. Hey, that's what the law actually says. Can I add to this? And this might be taking it a little deep, mm -hmm. but if you, if you go back to... Uh, I, I won't I don't remember the year I, I think 69 or 70 uh Charles Manson oh wow right I mean yeah. I mean we're going back deep like Helter Charles Skelter Man I wrote Helter that. Skelter he, yeah, right. Manson didn't do any of the crimes but he he orchestrated he orchestrated yep. everything from a, from another place and and he's he's you know they they they, they took him down that well way. we're gonna go to a break but I just want to see in the article it says in order to prove a Rico case Prosecutors need to show that some member of the group agrees that two racketeering activities were completed, suggesting that there was a pattern of crime. Racketeering activities include arson, bribery, counterfeiting, distribution of a controlled substance, embezzlement, extortion, gambling, homicide, kidnapping, mail fraud, money laundering, robbery, wire fraud, and witness tampering. There's at least four items there that look like they really fit under, you know, Trump's uh, 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 umbrella. So McQuaid said it, it should be, it could be fraud, tinkering with election machines, pressuring officials like Raffensperger to change their votes, or submitting a false slate of electors. All of those things fit under the the definition of racketeering. So listen, we got to take a quick break and talk to our sponsors. Don't go away. We will see you on the side of the break here at Living for the People at 91.3 FM WBNY. love bugs and companions. They are our pets, our family, and they make life better. When we face unexpected challenges, so do our pets. That's why we're on a mission to support people and their pets. Whether donating a bag of kibble, sharing an Instagram post of a lost cat, or welcoming a foster pet into your home, every bit of kindness counts. Visit petsandpeopletogether.org to learn how to be a helper in your community. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. 91.3 FM WBNY is proud to present Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Award-winning investigative journalism. Is the NRA 
they imploded. Providing relevant analysis that makes you think. Secret State Department documents, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. Fact-finding reports you will not hear elsewhere. Democracy Now! airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. on 91.3 FM, WBNY, Buffalo. Ready for radio that's challenging, innovative, and encouraging? Tune in, living for the people. This is L. Nathan Hare. Join me right here, 91.3 FM, WBNY. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. after Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! We'll provide objective analysis regarding current issues. Call 878-5104. It's Living for the People on 91.3 FM, WBNY. All right, welcome back to Living for the People. This is L. Nathan here, your host. We're here with Norm McCarter, who is our in-studio audience in one. Welcome back, Norm. Well, thank you, Mr. Hare. And we're also here with Willie H., who does the live streaming of the program. Welcome back, Willie. Welcome, everybody, to Living for the People with L. Nathan here. Once again, my condolences to James Brown family. Rest in peace, my friend. I love you. Absolutely. And, you know, send your condolences, if you can, uh, to that number at 716-878. 5104. That's 716 878 5104. And of course, you can use that number to call us to comment on what you hear being talked about on today's program. Uh, Jill Colvin wrote an article uh, in the, or for the Associated Press uh, talking about the legal peril that uh, uh, tr- where Trump calls on G- the GOP to rally around him and focusing on uh, investigating Biden as opposed to investigating Donald Trump. Now, what's interesting about this is Trump is actually threatening. And I'm not making this up. It's not inference. He actually threatened verbally on air, on tape. He threatened all the other candidates that are running for president that you should not be running for president against me. You should be doing everything you can to investigate Joe Biden and get Joe Biden impeached. That's where your effort ought to be, because Joe Biden is the head of a crime family. Now, who do you think is the head of a crime family? Now, it may be that Joe Biden's son, Hunter, you know, got uh, a a job as a a board member of uh, Burishma, whatever they call that uh, Ukrainian uh, oil company, Burishna. And uh, he he got, you know, several million dollars, apparently, uh, from them. And he did that based on his relationship with his father. Because why would the Ukrainians even know who he was if if he was not the son of the vice president of the United States? So it seems to be true that they used he used his family name, you know, in order for him to be able to benefit himself. But that doesn't make Joe Biden a criminal any more than you wouldn't call, although you should, but you wouldn't call Donald Trump a criminal because his daughter and his son-in-law were benefiting to the tune of 30 or 40 million dollars from— <laughs> what they did, you know, selling their father's name and their relationship with their father. But, of course, you don't hear the Republicans whining about that. But they're trying to make this case against Joe Biden really just to try to diminish. And this is the problem. They're trying to (coughs) diminish Joe Biden in order to make Trump seem less onerous, you know, to, to, to the public. The reality is the outcome of all of this is the the presidency itself is becoming diminished. So when we get past 2024, what is the American public going to think about whatever the presidency is in at the beginning of 2025? Is it going to have the sense of 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 awesomeness, you know, of being, you know, a, a, a beacon of being the chief of the largest economy on earth, uh, the the largest bastion of freedom on earth? You know, the uh, uh, the most reliable place where uh, you have a multicultural, multiracial uh, uh, a country that, that is able to live under law uh, and that everybody has a fair chance at being able to prosper in the design and operation of the country. That's what America it, it, it has presented itself to be uh, to the world. Is America going to have that same awesomeness, you know, that same uh, 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 eminence and so on after we get done with all of this mess around Donald Trump or are we going to, are we going to soil the presidency of the United States where it just becomes another, you know, sort of punk political job, you know, by, you know, some selfish, 
you know, uh, uh, self-centered politicians. Is that the way America is going to look? Is it going to be tarnished in a very fundamental way as a consequence of what's going on right now? I think that that's the case. Voting has become tarnished. Listen to what these people say that uh, are on Donald Trump's side. Well, our votes don't count anyway. It doesn't make any difference whether you vote or you don't vote. You know, it, 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 the whole process is is distorted, you know, and it's it, it, the process is rigged. It's rigged because Donald Trump and the people that want to uh, uh, replace the democratically elected governance of the United States with an autocratic government that's run by their point person, Donald Trump, or his lookalike, you know, uh, uh, Rod DeSantis or somebody like that. Is, is that really what you want? Those people who want that don't really want the America that you say you want. But you need to be, un- be clear, the America that you say you want, the people that support Donald Trump don't want that America. There's a reason why there's tens of thousands of votes or millions of votes going for, for Donald Trump, because those people don't want the multicultural America where we're uh, uh, living under law, uh, where everybody has a fair shot, that there's reliability of the judicial system to be able to defend people's rights and so on. Everybody doesn't want that. Those people that support Donald, uh, Donald Trump don't seem to want that. They want something else. They want a different kind of America. And we need to understand that that's what's going on. And the racket is not just the people around Donald Trump. It's the people in the electorate around Donald Trump, the people that want Donald Trump. We have to find a way to contain that body of people and to reduce that number of people in our our public, because you're not going to have an America if those people have their way. What you see in America today won't won't be here four or five years from now. I'm just trying to help us a little bit, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 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 this um, Donald Trump uh, uh, actually ramped up his calls for the uh, Republican Party rivals to drop out of the 2024 presidential race altogether. That would guarantee Donald Trump to be able to say that anybody trying to prosecute me, investigate me, uh, to turn over, you know, uh, 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 unsavory things that I have done, you're interfering with the uh, presidential election in 2025. He wants that started, that script to start right now. You're interfering, you know, in 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 our election electoral process. Now he announced his presidency in November of last year, so he's been running for office since November 2022. Why is he running for office? Why is he? Why did he start so soon? Because it, when there, nobody else was running, he did that because he wanted to be able to say to the public that anybody who was attacking me for any criminal wrongdoing that you claim I might have, might have done, you can't do that because you're interfering with the presidential election in 2025. He's going to cloak himself in his his presidential candidacy. Go ahead. Uh, this might sound kind of crazy. I just want to ask you, I know your knowledge of, of um, uh, people that might be reputable or, or might be um, a good person to run against Trump. Hmm. It's probably better than can most. I, can I find anybody that fits that? Right, <laughs> right. right. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if we've had some people in the past that um, ran and may have, may have lost. Um, somebody that could come out of the woodwork, somebody that might be able to, because right now it don't look like there's anybody that um, can really can really beat him on the Republican side. It's hard to say because uh the, the Republican Party has actually beat down the kinds of people that that look like they had some possible chance of being reasonable representations of the American, <coughs> excuse me, the American presidency, especially in the Donald Trump era since 2015. They basically beat down everybody else, you know, that that has attempted uh, uh, to run. I, I, I don't know that I see anybody on the Republican side. The only one that even has a bit of a chance. Oh, of that, come on! Don't even say it, Will. Well, he's the only one. I, I only one that, that I see that that. Who was is, that again? He, he's talking about RD. 
R.D., Ron DeSantis? Yeah, I mean, the only one, which okay. is still not a good choice. Norm, go ahead and spill that coffee. Out. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I was trying, I'm, I'm not I was trying to I'm stop not, you, but... I'm, but not <laughs> trying to, I'm not saying I want him. I'm just saying he's the only one that probably uh, could. But, 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 but some of his ideas are so crazy. Even Ron, crazy, Ron DeSantis you know, has, just proven, has proven that he is just a crass, dishonest, despicable person. Racist. Right? Also, right? From, so, from what you know, I see. I mean, he actually defended, you know, this corrupt curriculum that they used to revise the uh, education standards in Florida with regard to uh, the African uh, uh, experience in this country. Yeah. He, he actually justified this and said that the rest of America needs to, to, to become like Florida, you know, like, like Florida is the American Revolution. No, Florida, Florida is not the American Revolution. And Florida's economy is not what he's been telling you that it is. The economy is actually sinking in Florida. I don't want to go down that road right now. Ron DeSantis is not the guy. I appreciate you trying to put something on the table. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> if anybody, I mean, well, we don't, you, we, you, can't take, you can't take stuff out of the garbage can and put it on the plate <laughs> and, hey, and hey. act like that's food. Okay? Mr. Hare, you can't, you can't resurrect somebody and bring somebody up from, from years past that might um, Not from the able, years past, from the dead. You from know? the dead, you got to resurrect them. Now. <laughs> he, he, he's trying to he's trying to bring somebody from well, the tail the tails of the crypt. I, I, still, I still think Biden <laughs> might have a chance, even though I'm not. I'm, no, I'm might, talking about somebody on the Republican you, side. You could look at at somebody like uh, Chris Christie. Yeah, now, yeah, okay. Now okay. the problem the problem with Chris okay. Christie is that he's yeah. a crook. You know, he yeah. actually used the the government of of New Jersey to close. The the uh, uh, I think it's the Washington what is it, the George Washington Bridge yeah. that runs from from uh, New Jersey to uh, Manhattan to close that bridge okay. to punish the uh, 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 th- th- wh- wh- was it who was he trying to punish he was trying to punish somebody that that didn't go along with Chris Christie's <laughs> game right because you know you got you got two uh, powers in the Port Authority. Uh, you know, where, where New Jersey is, because yeah. one side of the, the port is in New Jersey and one side of the port is in uh, uh, New York State. And so you have two entities that run the Port Authority. But to be, because he was trying to, to punish somebody, I forget the details of this thing, but he's trying to punish somebody. And so we actually had them close the Jersey side of the of the bridge. And yet traffic backed up, you know, into Kentucky I, and whatnot. I, uh, True story, uh, Mr. Hare. I, I actually um, directed traffic on the George Washington. This no is, kidding. This is years ago. I was, I, we broke down, mm-hmm. and people were flipping me off and doing all kinds yeah. of stuff. We were trying to get a boost, and I tried to— So you know how serious that is when it, something disrupts traffic. It, it you know, was over crazy. There, right? It was crazy. You know, so Chris Christie did that, and then he lied about it. Then he got caught on it, and when he got caught on it, he says he blew it off his politics— and just moved on. And the American public allowed this to go on with no no charges being rendered against uh, uh, Chris Christie. Well, I still think Chris Christie is a better choice than Trump. See, so th- I it, mean, it, just, it's, it's that kind of reasoning. It's the reason why Chris Christie is still getting legs out here right yeah, now. Yeah, I just think somebody, Mr. Hick, because something we, we have to do. I mean, I don't really know what we so can what, do. So what about your girlfriend, Nikki Haley? Ooh. What, 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 oh, Will's Will's girl. No, hey, my girl. Will Will doesn't uh, like her at all. He, uh, <laughs> Will, Will does not like Nikki Haley at all. But I'm just saying she doesn't have any criminal background right. that we know of, right? So you know, but but again, she's another one of these people that she plays to the crass part of the uh, uh, public, the sort of uh, Southern strategy type people. She 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 plays to that group when she's talking to the. Uh, Republican side of the electorate. When she's talking to the public at, at, at large, she tends to be more nuanced, you know, very, you know, uh, 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 soft in her approach to those critical, uh, uh, critical issues. But, you know, you've got people like that that are what the Republican Party has to offer. I don't know of anybody that's not that kind of person that is uh, available in the Republican uh, uh, body. Will, uh, Will Horde, I think his name is, you know, a black guy from, uh, I think he's from California. Uh, he's a Republican. He tried to get his 
two cents in. He said the reason why Trump is running for office is to protect himself from being uh, uh, prosecuted for criminal, you know, uh, uh, behavior. And the audience booed him. He was mm. lucky they didn't throw, you know, do something like that Carly mm. B stuff and start throwing stuff at him. You need you need somebody with guts like that to stand up. Somebody that's going to stand up to Trump and say something. Well, like you, know, that, you know, we haven't heard a word from him since he said that. Uh, so. I, well, I understand, said, but so he, he may have, he may have stood hey. up for a minute, but he sat back down. They said, "Hey, that nigga." <laughs> Thank you. Get, uh, let's, not, let's not put those kind of words out okay, here. All right, see, you see, you see, see where he I'm went? Sorry. You see where he went, Norm? I'm sorry. He went all the way to the colony, right? But you know they thought that. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. Not, let's, not, that. let's not go there. Let's not, let's not you know, de defame people. Right. <laughs> and so uh, I just wanted to get that out there that, that it's important for us to understand what it is that we should be paying uh, attention to as, as a public. Uh, I went to something I hadn't talked about this uh, uh, Ukraine stuff for a little while. Uh, I understand that the uh, African uh, Union, I think it's the African Union, um, has put forth an initiative presented by uh, African leaders to be a basis for peace in Moscow's war on Ukraine. I don't know if you all heard about this, but Vladimir Putin is saying to certain African countries, listen, player, I got 50,000 pounds of wheat. That I can send over to you, even though we've closed mm. off the Black Sea ports, you know, we shut off the export of grain from Ukraine, but I can get you 50,000 if you'll side with me, you know, against uh, against the Americans. I'm not making that up. That's what he's, he's doing, right? Mm. Now, 50,000 pounds of wheat sounds like a lot of wheat, but when you're talking about a country that has like 10, 15 million people in it, 50,000 pounds of wheat ain't going to last you a week, you know, in that country, right? But he's using that you know, essentially, he's bribing uh, uh, African leaders to support his position on Ukraine. If you're an African leader, you would have to be a complete dunce for you not to understand that if you think it's OK to allow Russia to invade Ukraine, what would stop France from uh, reinvading Niger? What would stop Britain from reinvading, reinvading, uh, invading Algeria? You know, and so on. I mean, what are you ta what are you talking about? Why would you allow something like that to occur? Would you think it's OK for uh, the Congo to invade uh, Chad, you know, and so on? You wouldn't think that that was OK. So why would you say it's OK for the Russians to just arbitrarily choose to invade Ukraine? Ukraine was not involved in any kind of political dispute with the, the uh, Russians. There was no trade you know, issue with the Russians. There was no defense issue you know, with, the, with the Russians. There was no interstate transport you know, uh, 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 issue with Russia. The only issue was Russia wanted to become bigger than it was. Yep. And Ukraine was close. So they just, let me just take Ukraine, right? What would Poland do? What would Belarus do? What would Lithuania do? What would Romania do? These are border countries with Russia as well. Would you want it to be okay for for Russia to invade those countries uh, uh, a, a, as well? I mean, this is just conehead stuff. But I just wanted you to understand that's one of the things that's being put out here. That's that's where the African Union is weighing in, you know, on this, right? Um, trying to give themselves the Russians trying to give themselves a certain amount of moral, you know, uh, 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 nobility. Look at us. We're standing with the African Union countries and whatnot, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes when you when you reach in your pocket and you find there's a hand already in your pocket, you should try to cut that hand off. Don't just go eek. You, know? <laughs> you should try to chop that hand off because nobody should have had a hand in your pocket in the first place. No, right? that's right. So... Uh, the Chinese have put a proposal together on de-escalation mm -hmm. and de developing a ceasefire in Ukraine. The problem with all of these constructs that are being put forward by the African Union, by the European Union, by the uh, uh, Chinese and so on, is that they all start with the idea that you take the situation as it currently is and find some way to draw a, st a stabilization, you know, a, a, a cessation of uh, military activity where things are as they are. Well, that's like you had $1,000 in your pocket. I saw you on the way you know, down, down to the campus. I snuck up behind you, and I just took the $1,000 out of your pocket and put it in my pocket. Then you come back, and you want to fight. I said, okay, well, let's fight. So you and me fight. 
Now, we, if we settle the fight with, okay, well, Nate, you know, you, you got your licks, your, your licks in on Norm, and Norm says, well, you got your licks in on, on, on Nate, so we should have a ceasefire, yeah. right? But well, where's, where's my G at? <laughs> exactly. Where's my... We, we can't have a ceasefire until I put, I take the $1,000 out of my pocket and put it back in your pocket. Yes, sir. Now, here comes Willie. And Willie says, you know, I understand how y'all feel about this thing and whatnot, but you know, this this fighting is just disrupting everything on campus. We can't get classes done on campus because y'all are fighting and whatnot. Watch I put the thousand in my pocket. <laughs> no, no, Willie, Willie would say, listen, let me just take two hundred and fifty of those dollars out of Nate's pocket and put those in your pocket. Just, you know, we we'll try to get a peace agreement on the rest of it, mm. but but let's just get started right there. That that dog can't hunt. Don't hunt. Don't you, hunt, Mr. You can't Air. come to any kind of ceasefire until you give me back my money. I need my G. <laughs> right? I need my G. Well, that's that's what the Ukrainians are talking about. You can't talk about a ceasefire and you've taken almost 20% of my land. Yeah. You can't do that, okay? So give back my land. Take your tanks and your soldiers and your bullets and your missiles and whatnot. Take them back to wherever you came from in Russia. And once you get there— and prove to me that you're there and you're not here, then we can talk about ceasefires. Mr. Mr. Here, I don't think, and this is just my own personal opinion, but I don't think Russia is going... See, Russia, their thing is they, they want to be looked at from a standpoint of strength. Right. And and um, to do that, they, you know, they'd be, they'd be shown as weak, and then you've got all of these other countries around... Right. That you know now they they looking like well hey, hey you yeah. know they put up a great fight against Russia right you, Listen, you, you, if I'm Mongolia which is on the east side of Russia yeah and I said well dog you know the Russians went and took Ukraine then they had to give it back the Russians ain't as bad as we thought they were yeah right. I mean well, right. I think I want some of the Yukon territory yeah. Yeah. Man. <laughs> let, let right. me take some of that and add that to me. Yeah. Mongolia and whatnot right yes, I sir. mean I mean that's the kind of situation that but Russia created the situation. It, we wouldn't have this uh, uh, dichotomy if Russia had not done it in the first place, yeah. right? Yeah. So Russia is going to have to eat whatever the the long term reputation and political consequences are on Russia. Russia has to eat that because Russia did it in the first place. What What a question is: Do you think that they will resolve it in this manner? The only way it's going to get resolved right now is Russia is going to continue to spend money and try to do as much shooting up as they can and try to wear the Ukrainians out, not so much the Ukrainians out, but to wear out the European Union and the United States. Uh, I, I didn't talk about this before, but your cousin, oh, Donald my, Trump, my, oh. you, you notice how he was our cousin before, <laughs> but he's your cousin now. We, we've been talking for almost an hour, right? So yes, now he's your cousin. And uh, he has actually been arguing that the United States— the, the, the Republicans should uh, be uh, uh, pushing the United States to back out on Ukraine altogether. Mm. He's asserting that the Ukraine shouldn't get anything. On, uh, what did, let me see if I can uh, pu pull this up uh, uh, for, for you. He, he's actually asserting that Ukraine shouldn't get anything until, until they give something back to the United States. It is so warped. Oop. I was further into this thing than I thought. So here we go. Where did I put you? Right. So Trump argues that the Ukrainians, that 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 that, that the, the the Republicans should 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 halt the. The uh, uh, military mil military aid to Ukraine until the White House cooperates with congressional investigations into Biden and his family. He's trying to wow. pull the same stuff now that he was being he was actually impeached for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that? That was in uh, 2017 uh, uh, to two, no, 2019. He was impeached. For the very same thing, trying to to, to get uh, 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 what's his name uh, Zelensky to, to 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 create dirt on Joe Biden and Joe Biden's son, and he said, "I'm not going to give you this 500 million dollars worth of military aid unless you do this." He's doing the same thing now. He's saying, yes. "You know, you can't get military aid from the United States unless 
uh, uh, you, 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 you help us uh, 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 to cooperate in the congressional investigation of the, the, the Bidens and their family. Just, just misdirection, just misdirections. It's just beyond belief. The man, commi right. he's committing the same crimes over and over and over again in your face. And he doesn't even get the media to react to it. You know, I mean, there was Jill Colvin's article talked about this, this issue, but it's just one little line in the story. You didn't hear it talked about on MSNBC or CBS or uh, ABC, you know, and so on, because they don't seem to, 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 to react to it as, as strongly as it seems like you should. This is the exact same crime the man got impeached for. He's doing the same thing again, and the public is not reacting to it. So listen, this is just a story for the day. Uh, I, I wanted to, to, to talk a little stridently because that's the way James would have been talking. We had been talking together on, on, on this subject. James would have been on this like, like white on rice, you know. <laughs> so uh, thank you, my brother James Brown, for all of what you have been uh, to us in our community. We're going to keep you alive in our prayers and in our work. Uh, we're going to find some way to create some kind of tributary uh, for yeah. uh, for James yeah. Braun. We'll, we'll, we'll give you some thoughts on that uh, yeah. as the weeks, you know, uh, pass on. Love you, Khaki. I hope everything works out well. Uh, give us whatever you need from me. I think I, I put something on your email address or on James' uh, um, uh, uh, cell phone. I put a, a note on there how you can contact me directly and uh, whatever we can do to help you uh, with the arrangements and so on, let me know. And we'll get that done. Thank all of you out there for listening to us and supporting us here at Living for the People at 91.3 FM, WBNY. We'll see you all on Friday.